Parental discretion is advised. So folks, this week we talk about Ring of Honor. There's a lot of talk about Hulk Hogan's penis, fan altercations, and we've got the most yelling per square podcast foot. All that and more on this week's Wrestling Mayhem Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 341. Fuck it, we're doing this. Yeah! Uh, I'm coming at you from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one, folks. I'm here. I wasn't supposed to be here, but I'm here. But that's okay. That's okay. We love you. So, uh, it's I, Sorg Appreciation Night. No, it yeah. isn't. No, or it he's isn't. A Feedback detected. Or he no, is a jolly okay. fellow. Um, anyways, oh, yes. Oh, no. here comes CM Punk to kick you in the face. Oh, no. I'm going to get punched in the face by CM Punk. Also with us is <laughs> Chachi. Used to getting punked in the face and uh, on the streets of Pittsburgh. What up, bitches? Finish. Yeah, yeah. From I, get point punched. Begin. I get punched in the face, so oh, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah? What? Oh, yeah? I take it, Uh huh. turn the other cheek, oh, yeah. and kick him in the nuts and run. Also with us is DJ Lunchbox from Parts Unknown. DJ Lunchbox, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey. <laughs> okay. Oh, so <laughs> no, that is, stop. No, no, stop. Unacceptable? You redo that. No, what? I will not redo it. I had an awesome intro ready to go at 8.30. Hey! Hey, redo it. Nope. You're fired. Moving on. Also coming at us from San Antonio, Texas. Your closet's open. The Wrestle Fan. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and also coming back at us is the Hot Wheels. Hey, folks. Look, I got a lot of nuts. Why? Because just in case Chachi gets kicked in them again this weekend, I got him some spares. I'm there gonna go. put I'm gonna put those so, in my pants. <laughs> so glad I can't see the video. Wow, <laughs> wow! And I'm of course Sorgatron. Uh, Sor- at Sorgatron on the Twitter is a uh, master of the podcasting ceremonies. Uh, this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find out more about us over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including wonderful articles from DJ Launchbox, Russell Fan, and Mad Mike with his angry, angry coverages of the TNA Impact. For now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, forever. Uh, you can also uh, check us out. We're on iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, Stitcher. Please drop a comment uh, as rating, everything like that, especially on the iTunes. That seems to be the big one. Also, Stitcher, really important because right now there is a Stitcher's Award nomination going on. Please go to SorgatronMedia.com and check that out. Uh, vote for Wrestling Mayhem Show, anything else, Sorgatron Media, all your uh, favorite podcasts, and make sure they get recognized. Vote so for please check that out. For what? Even the ones we don't apply for. I was going to say, just vote for Wrestling Mayhem Show for everything. Food and drink. Gay and lesbian. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Fucking, um, I, have a, I have a wild cherry Pepsi. That counts as food and drink. <laughs> there you go. We used to do, we used to do some other stuff. Uh, you can also drop us a line to that wonderful email at at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I saw you going for that drink. I was to wrestle to drink. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, drop us a line at 41220 I'm sorry, 206 WMS0. And please buy the app. It's on your iPhone, iPad. It's on the Amazon App Store for Android. $1.99. Support the show. Also, there's a, there's a link, new updated link for a uh, spreadsheet uh, for our shop over there if you want to buy some merch. Uh, we don't get much off of them. I'm really kind of doing them so people can go rep the show and everything. I think we get like a dollar off each one. It's really not for us to make money, it's just for. You guys have the opportunity to represent these things. Most of them are not far away from whatever spreadsheet's charging for this stuff. Uh, but there's all kinds of stuff on there. So we used to do these quote t-shirts. I'm thinking about coming back. Let us know if you want we that. Like me, I've always wanted to do like a quote of the week from the show that we just like slap on a shirt. If you guys want to buy it, go for it. Like kind of barbershop-ish in that. But that's one idea. Um, yes. So let's get uh, started with the show. Oh, hey, yo, join us here every um, uh, uh, Tuesday uh, around about 8.30, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We have the chat room going. We got Riz, 50 Matches, Alexander Cars, and others in there right now. Uh, you can be part of the show and watch us live and watch stuff that doesn't make it. So, um, yeah, so let's get right with it. The only way we know how uh, with the fan mail. Who's first? Oh, we got well, Matt. Oh, go ahead, Chachi. 
Uh, greetings, Mayhem Crew. Matt Carlin's here, sending thanks for a positive reception for my first voicemail last week. I figured it would be good to put my thoughts in email form this time, so I don't risk embarrassing myself. Last week, I tried to focus on three core points. One, Seamus is a big Irish jerk. Two, Raw exp- or WWE expanded Raw to three hours to punish wrestling, wrestling fans who are parents in their mid-30s and try to force themselves upon the children of those parents. Three, nothing is happening on Raw. The following is a log of my view and experience with Raw on Monday night. I will sum up each segment by classifying it as something or nothing. Numbering of segments may not be perfect. Deal with it. 9.05 p.m. Kids to bed. DVR engage. Segment 1. Cena. Nothing. Segment 2. Ryback kills two guys. Nothing. Segment 3. Brodus downgrades from Fedora to ball cap. Close, but not enough. Nothing. Segment 4. Vince Punk. Great something. Segment 5, Car Stereo, see what I did there, defeat primetime players, competitive tournament, semi-final match, something. Segment 6, 7, Seamus vs. Barrett, Wade Steele, step spot, effortless, genius, JBL and JR singing Wade's praises, I'm in heaven, DQ finish, don't want to be a jerk because the action was good, and I have a man crush on Barrett, but this is nothing. Segment 8, Backstage recap, vintage nothing. Segment 9, Antonio vs. Kid, FF City. It's fast forward. Uh, Neutralizer may be the best finisher name in the business, nothing. Segment 10, 11, Dolph Del Rio vs. Cy. Team, hell no. Brian is a better WWE superstar than Punk and did it in about half the time. Please note the distinction between superstar and professional wrestler. I suddenly realized this tag team story and gimmick is all Brian. Kane is merely an extremely talented prop. Also, JPL ridiculously praises the show-off's amateur credentials. Gimmick contradiction of... uh, Gimmick contradiction. Of course, he got pinned. Nothing. Segment 12, Larry King. Fast forward, nothing. Segment 13, Raitino versus... Road Scholars. I'm convinced the gimmick for Road Scholars is that Cody is actually a total moron. Cobra took the disaster kick. Nothing but wait. Stop the presses. Encore. Nope. Sorry. Still nothing. 10.35 p.m. D- DVR blazing a digital trail across my television as well as time and space. I am caught up and watching live. Two and a half hours of rock consumed in a humane 90 minutes. Segment 14. Just in time for Divas match. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. No, I'm going to change laundry. Nothing but pretty girls. Segment 15, Daniel Bryan. You look like you got slapped in the face with a fruit roll-up. Something. <laughs> Segment 16, main event. Punk vs. V- Vince. Something. No question. Highlights. What a great generational matchup this is. JBL. What a maneuver. Punk on the headset. Fans chanting, this is awesome. The building was shaking. I see some on Twitter complaining about the finish. They're joyless idiots. This is exactly what we need as wrestling fans. This is the dangled carrot that gets us through all the other crap. Closing point. I believe this Raw was the ratings test case for CM Punk. If this main event doesn't get, move the meter, he's going down at HIAC business. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, me either. Uh, if you read this extremely long email, thank you. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Your friend in the mainstream media, Matt Carlins, at Matt Carlin slash at 50 matches. Please read the following in the best Heath Slater voice. I can't, I can't do Heath Slater, but it says I'm the Grand Slam fan, baby. Okay. All right. Excellent. Who's got the next one up? Is this the one about the tag team, Chachi? Um, shit. Hold on. No, uh, uh, PPC is next. Oh, okay. We'll do Uh, that. LB, I'm going to try to get some music up for you. Uh, All right. (laughs) (laughs) I love your prep. And this is me taking (laughs) copious sips, because I still got two more emails to read. (laughs) What it is, Mayhem Crew? <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's at Big PPC. 
S isn't it, and the whole kidnap Hogan and Sting is super lame. There is a good chance that Jeff Jarrett or Bully Ray or Bischoff is behind S's and it's. If Jeff Hardy wins the world title at the Bound for Glory, I will kick my own ass. It will be difficult if he wins the title, he bet not try, and bring back his dumb fruity maluti in the booty purple burning colored fruity ass belt. Aries wins or I riot. Triple Threat Tag Team Match title with Angle Styles versus Daniels and Kaz versus Chavo and Hernandez I think will steal the show along with Zima Ion Match and anything else X Division related or Samoa Joe related. Excuse me. <laughs> bound right. for glory is bound for failure if Jeff Hardy is champ raw. So Brodus Clay and our truth of the match wait no a dance party boogie with Funkadactyl, Cameron, and Naomi, and Little Jimmy dance because Little Jimmy is going through changes. <laughs> Puberty! <laughs> really? Really? Well. Damn! Ron Zeman style. Vince interrupts, says dance out of ring because the state of WWE address is next. Great segment with Vince and Punk. He got to knock Vince on his ass. Vince admitted that he is not a quad CM Punk guy. End quote. Fucking wow. Punk versus Vince. More to come on this. Heyman is amazing, by the way. Mexicans win. Mexicans win. Once again, Team Masked Marvels. Team Sin Cara and Ray Cara. No, I'm sorry. Team Sin Mysterio and Ray Cara. Team Mini Masked Mexican Monstrosities will go out on to the final just to lose to Team Road Scholars. They need to face a good guy tag team to beat up who better than Ray and Cara. Quote me... Mexican win, just not when it's for the gold. It would be entertaining to see Team Hell No versus Masked Marvels at some point if they both stay as teams. Seamus versus Wade Barrett was everything it should have been. I would have liked a clean finish, but having Tensa come out and interrupt maintain that no one really wins or losses. I think I skipped Cena. Well, he was... There hurt arm and all, and talked about how he and Punk is what everyone wants. It would be a good match, yes, but they have no one else on their level, and seems they need to take a few changes every now and again. Someday, Cena and Punk will be hurt, or whatever, not on TV. They need no main event stars when Cena is hurt. He can't be away, what does this say, to other in company, when there is only so much room at the top. Build no people, put people over for fuck's sake. Okay, sorry. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Cesaro versus Tyson Kidd was good. They both look strong, but obviously Cesaro got the squash finish victory. His finisher last week against Brothers was amazing. A United States champion to be proud of. Team Hell North, Team Friendship, Team Hell Fire Negative Nancy's, <laughs> Brian and Kane versus Del Rio and Ziggler. Great match per usual. Seems like Ziggler and Del Rio lose all the time. I think Ziggler cashes in after Hell in a Cell match and Shemis. Ziggler, new champ by the end of pay per view, hopefully, time will tell. Brian is amazing. Ziggler is amazing. Facts. Hey, wrestle fan. Amazing, amazing, amazing sounded good. Ryback <laughs> destroyed Epico and Primo. <laughs> it would be great if their ping to ask us to invest in Ryback that he could have one-on-one -on -one matches and be a contender instead of two-on-one -on -one squash matches, whatever. Well, they... Hmm? They explained the uh, two-on-one match last night, so that kind of worked out. Yeah, yeah, they, they kind of built up for it since, since he fought the other guys. Yeah. yeah. Santino and Zack Wright, Team Cobros versus Road Scholars. Thank goodness that they won. Mental mitts match for Shizzle. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. I like Ryder, but he has been buried for a long while. Santino is fucking pathetic. Funny is a legitimate threat of any kind, no, not at all. <laughs> Santino equals Cobra stroking 
Truddle f- sucking sorry excuse for wrestler <laughs> who lost just like he normally does Milhan monkey butt cheeks in your face Santino <laughs> fucking ball <of> sacri <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like the endurance run for LB. Uh, Encore came out, kicked the shit out of Santino to hell yeah! Wow, what a segment with Vince and Paul Heyman, classic shit. Punk DVD is going to be fucking great, by the way. Buy it at Trotty says sounded good. What? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I... You need to buy it. Okay. You need to buy it. I will buy. I will buy it. Friday. If it's Divas match on Raw, what the fuck? No way. Caitlyn versus Eve for the Divas title, and Layla clearly cannot answer a simple question who she wants to win, Eve or Caitlyn. The best person, she says, ugh, what a generic lame answer. Eve wins. Jay Ross on commentary, together are freaking great. Josh Matthews is, quote, only doing his job, and, quote, nobody likes him, it seems. I always thought Josh was cool since Tough Enough Season 1. Chris, not whiskey. And Josh were way better and cooler than Maven bullshit ass. I said it. <laughs> Let, <laughs> Let King segments were pretty good. Miss Old Show and Coffee has hopefully new life. We will see how it goes. Let King with D. Brian is great. Vince McMahon got bitch slapped. Punk versus Vince. What a maneuver. Punk got McMahon chair to nuts and the McMahon microphone melee. Low blow. Low blow. By Punk. Oh my god. I'm taking to you, creep. Right back with John Cena. Who will it be? Punk, you choose. Or I will next week. Who do you think will fight Punk Mayhem Crew? I say it be Cena. I would rather see Ryback. At least it would be something new. A while back, I asked for Fave 5 a while back. Instead, I will ask each of you if you could play GM or Poco who would have as champions for WWE. Please answer with others on show. I like Punk with WWE title. Brian should be world champ. Ziggler should and Swagger check champs. Antonio as US champ is good. Sandow as IC champ. Natalia Divis champ. Till next time, it's me. It's me. It's Big PPC. As well, don't put your hands on Punk or you will <laughs> get punked by his fist. Damn! Yeah, yeah. I did email Big PPC <laughs> during this and said, "Please uh, write shorter emails." <laughs> I'm worrying for I'm worrying for LB's health, and I don't have enough <laughs> Tetris music. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We'll 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 see. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. So you know there are questions say about there. that email. What's that? It was amazing. <laughs> it was what? It was amazing. <laughs> it was it was amazing. But oh my god, I I wor- I'm worried for you, LB. It's the Russian gets stuck in your throat. <laughs> All right, uh, also nice. kind of Swedish and Eastern Bloc. <laughs> uh, it, he wants to know... It will come out in unexpected uh, sections of the show. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you to know who uh, we pick as champions? As champions? Um, um, like now? Uh, yes. Yeah. I like who they have now. I, I Yeah, I, I like who they have now as well. Um... Uh, let me just stipulate that I could give a shit less who has the women's belt. Don't it's nobody care. really worthwhile. Natalia yeah. is the only one. Karma. 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 Don't care. Well, she doesn't <laughs> work for the Someone company. is employed, Sorg. We do something? Um, I, I think... Uh, Sarah Del Rey. Punk is good. Um, I like uh, Brian and Kane as tag team champions. Yeah. Um, I would put in... Wade Barrett. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to go with Wade Barrett as people need to start stepping up as a uh, world champion. I, that's the thing is, uh, you know, okay, it's been really nice that we really can't complain too much about. Oh, this guy's been getting so many tile shots. Oh, this guy's always in the main event. You got two guys that didn't have a belt three years ago. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, 
uh, more or less. I don't check me on those dates. Uh, yeah. You have. T- I think. I think in the long term, you can definitely say that. You have. Uh, you know, Punk and Sheamus are definitely those guys that weren't in the main yeah, event that yeah, long yeah. ago. And you got two guys that are very different champions. Yeah. Very, and not just like face heel, whatever. Even when they're both face or. Whatever you think, he, feel a face. I'm not getting into that discussion with Russell Fan. Uh, I think we're in that discussion. I know. <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. We're just not starting. He's but, a heel. But they're they're two very very different face. champions having two very very different reigns as champ for both for a very long time. Really, I mean, since WrestleMania at the shortest. So I think it's really good. Um, yeah, you really. Uh, then we got Miz. We got Ziggler in the t- like hovering under the title hunt, and we got Antonio Cesaro. I think Antonio Cesaro that belt's doing exactly what it needs to do. We'll see where they go with it. He's really proven himself, having great matches. That's bringing up the U.S. belt. Oh, oh yeah. Santino's bullshit for any belt. I think mean, Santino's great. Yeah. He's got Saturday Morning Slam. Um, put, uh, he does. He doesn't. Santino should not be holding a title belt at least like an Intercontinental or a U.S. for longer than a, maybe a month. He can be the Saturday Slam champion for all I care. Uh, go ahead, Chuck. Uh, I would put uh, Cody in as U.S. champ. Yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah, but being in the hunt, but he's in the tag stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, is Sandel or uh, Sandel. Miz? Miz as uh, IC champ, I love. Yeah, and yeah. I would never change that. No. And yeah, absolutely, that's it. Oh, what about you, LB? Um, I I agree. I like the way things are right now. Um, I think uh, Cesaro's doing absolutely fantastic work. Um, I, I'm a little tired of Sheamus, though. I mean. <sighs> We get it. You're big yes. Irish. We get it. Yeah, but I mean, there's always going to be. I mean, God, you look at what ha- what's happening in Ryback. There's always going to be that large segment of the population that does like the big brawler guys, you know, or the well, guys, no, or the guys that are brawl. douchey to Spanish people. Wrestle fan, I know. Hey, that's uh, I my mean, big that's, that's, that's fine. You got you got that. You got your fit. And you're fitting that demographic somehow, right? Fine. I guess. Um, but but I, that's I love, okay. I love you don't how. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, both champions are not for you. They're spreading that out. You know, they can put two guys on top. They're going to serve different purposes and serve different audiences. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I just love how Matt Carlin's described it as Seamus is just a big Irish jerk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a demographic there. What about you, Hot Wheels? I have to say, honestly, I agree. Basically, it's a majority. Did. Honestly, I'm happy with everybody. But they really do need to work something with the whole Divas division because, I mean, honestly, any of the ones that are fighting for that title right now aren't really worth it, really. It's like they need something. It's a shame that Karma's not around anymore. Beth's not really into it as much. Uh, but it, it's that's the only thing that seems to need work now. I mean, the tag team division has picked up a lot better, and everywhere else it, it just – it's fitting now. It is. Can I can I say can I say that one quick thing from like the whole everyone's recapping raw? I actually did kind of like the Divas match because they're doing storylines and it was actually a very competitive matchup mm-hmm. with you know Eve working on the leg and you know actually looking like a wrestler. Eve is not worth the leathery skin she's made out of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not talking about her. No, I think Eve is the new Christy Hemi. Oh, uh, I wouldn't go that far. Wow, I'm wow. going that far. She, him, her, her hungry butthole and sitting <laughs> on pies and can't really wrestle and face rubbed on the gates of hell. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? He is angry. Did he just, You've never just, heard him rant about Christy. Did, Chris he, he, did he just black out? It's been a while, I guess. <laughs> I thought he, he doesn't like CNA. a blind it's a good thing. Rage. It's not. Holy it's not shit. a steam machine style, you know, blackout rant on <laughs> you know the mentally disabled. No, but Eve what is close. Samoans? <laughs> mentally retarded or Samoans? Wow. Okay. Uh, I, on that note, I think was there any other questions to that email? No, that was, no, it. That, was that it. Okay, yeah. we got another. We got more email. Yes, uh, Russell crap. fan, go ahead and uh, do the Spanish. Okay, it's time to be educated from a little uh, El Gran Azul email. El Gran Azul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it like that. I can barely get these words out as I, as I can. Okay. Hola, amigos. Es me. Es me. Es El Gran Azul. Pipi si fil. 
usted no le guste partidos mexicanos ganadores, pero ¿qué tiene de su embajado Vladimir Kozlov Heco? Ultimamente, ole! I don't think that's right at all. No, Whatever. that is right. That's, that's one what year it says. Spanish. This is um, this is this is why the in-laws get so angry at me. Go the ahead. Bra era genial. I know this feeling now. Incluyendo a CM Punk, golpeando a Luke Gallows en la multitud. <laughs> Brilliant trabajo de los mejores en el mundo. Ole! Ole! I'm gonna read. I'm gonna. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read what it says in English because okay. uh, he was nice enough to put it in Google Translate. I, I'm interested to see what Vladimir Kozlov <laughs> comes up. <laughs> no, that, uh, Vladimir Kozlov is Vladimir Kozlov. No, 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 I know. I, I, I just think it, it's funny. How it came up in conversation. I just think it's funny that you put in all the Spanish words, and then out of nowhere, Vladimir Kozlov. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. It's me. It's me. It's El Gran Azul. PPC Phil, you may not like Mexicans winning matches, but what has your ambassador Vladimir Kozlov been up to lately? Ole! Ole! <laughs> Raw was great, including CM Punk beating up Luke Gallows in the crowd. Brilliant work by the best in the world. Ole! Ole! <laughs> Gracias. El Gran Azul. Follow me on Twitter. Ole! At Ole! EGA Ole. <laughs> P.S. If hey. I stay awake long enough on Wednesday nights, I might submit reviews for the following Mayhem show. Ole! Ole! By the way, I love how he also, just in case, I love how he also what, translated what gracias means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gracias. No, I'm not kidding. He did in parentheses at the end of the email. It's like, thanks. All right. And with that, I, I think, is there any other email? I don't think yes, there's any other email. There, there is, is more email? Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. There's one wow. more email. We need shorter it's emails intense. so we can fit all these in. <sighs> all right. Who's got this one? I do. It's I, me. I'm sorry. I don't have. What, 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 what are you going away? No, I'm. Wait, wait. He's repositioning. <laughs> I'm doing it for the safety of your ears. Okay. I... WMS! There he is. Well. The video came out. Oh? No, not the one of CM Punk smacking a dude across the face. Whoa! You know. I don't? That video. Oh, brother. I heard no. about this. Oh, and, no. Um, can I just say, it's fucking sad. Smack it really me. is. I mean, oh, here's... You watched it. <laughs> here's 80s slash early, uh, early 90s American Hulk Hogan. American... No, it, it's German Hulk Hogan. Do one other... I'm gonna smack you. Having sex for the first few clips, and then the rest of the video is him telling the girl that he just drilled, who looked like she was going to bed, about how Nick Hogan's girlfriend's twin sister said she would go out with him. I will give that one to you again. The twin sister of Nick Hogan's girlfriend wanted to go out with Hulk Hogan. Uh, well, that's fucking weird. Anyways... <laughs> At least wow. we won't have to hear about another sex tape again. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 dot. Quote, Hulk Hogan tells his family there may be a second sex tape about to leak on the internet. Link, end quote. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Until next time, my Hulk Hogan wrestling buddy is sitting in the corner where it belongs. Riz. <laughs> it's sideways, but you get the idea. Uh, that's because he sent it from his iPhone. Oh, okay. Anyone who emails a photo from the iPhone, it comes in it sideways. It doesn't work right yeah. sometimes, yeah. Yeah, that happens. Technology's a bitch. Oh, wow, man. and then finally we do have some stuff from Bo oh. Diggity. Holy so crap. Much he fan. also was not brief, and I didn't get a chance to... <laughs> Uh, I didn't get a chance to go over these. Sorry. Everything Bo Diggity says is oh, fucking Bo, Bo gold. Bo Diggity can have a five-minute segment every month for all I care. <laughs> An extra big woo coming to you live from deep inside of Blair Country in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte. And this is Bo fucking Diggity. I'd like to thank Sorg for doing a pretty good Bo Diggity impression. Not the real deal. That's coming to you live right now. Yes. So well done, Sork. All right. I'd like to bring you my State of the Union of wrestling. <laughs> wrestling in general, not just WWE. 
not just Monday Night Raw, but wrestling in general. First up, we started off with indie wrestling, where it all started. Wrestle fans, <laughs> where it all started in here. All right, that's enough. We're, we can we can be we can be done. We need to waste all that time on the amateurs. Move up the rung ever so slightly to TNA. The Aces and Eights pro, uh, program is terrible. It is absolutely terrible. Uh, I believe at one point uh, they had uh, Joseph Parks uh, duct taped, and they were going to electrocute him. I think. And still cut back to, let's go back to Bound for Glory results or some shit. Try Ninja Turtles. Listen, TNA, I get that you've, re- you've fully realized that you're not getting any higher than second place. <laughs> or even third place, because SmackDown basically gets second place. So you're not getting any higher than third place. You're going with the uh, well, we're, third is our number one. <laughs> <laughs> the the, no, I get it. You don't. You're really not trying at this point. But you know what? If you know that you're not going to be any lower than third, I mean, let's really think about it. There's nobody below you either. So it's not like Ring of Honor is going to sneak up and steal your glory. Never know. So let's just be honest. Just be as terrible as possible. Just be the worst you can be. I want to turn you on like a bad reality show. That's what I would like to see. And occasionally there are good moments, like Destination X every year. But you realize that that's really too good for your fans, so you decide to not do that all the time, which is, uh, what's the word? Terrible business practices, but sure. Sure, just, you know, give them a subpar product and then hook them in every now and then with the good stuff. Got it. Wonderful job, TNA. (laughs) <laughs> Moving up to SmackDown. No one watches SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up to Raw. It's worth watching. Raw this week was fantastic. And there's somebody back there who loves the internet and is writing fucking comedy gold. I can't... Uh, uh, oh, uh, there's more. Oh. The oh. bow diggity can be contained oh. in three minutes. I wait, think... wait for it. Hold on. Wait. Wait for it. How dare you cut me off, yeah. voicemail? How dare you? I was in the middle of mail. talking. You don't cut Bo Diggity off. Apparently not. Not, never. Nope. I didn't yeah. waste my first voicemail talking about TNA's horse shit so that I could get cut the fuck off. Mm-mm. Not how <laughs> no, Bo Diggity never. works. Back to live action. Raw was fantastic. And there's somebody back there writing comedy gold. I'm going to speed this up, by the way. <laughs> Between Fruit Roll-Up Face, Larry King being an owl, the Miz dropping a number of divorce jokes right in Larry King and his wife's face. And everything that Damian Sandow does, including having a combined IQ approaching infinity, that's a calculus limit joke. <laughs> there are layers to that joke that some of you miscreants don't get. Vocabulary words. No vocabulary. <laughs> so we're back to Raw. That Punk McMahon match, while not on Austin level, was amazing, specifically for the what a maneuver line that Punk put on. I think he put on JBL's headset and mm-hmm. slammed Vince McMahon's face into a table after screaming what a maneuver into his face. <laughs> that was for internet smarks everywhere. In addition, JBL and Jim Ross need to never go anywhere ever again because commentary is better than it's ever been. And Jerry the King Lawler, while wonderful, and I thank you for all you've done for the wrestling business, just just stay home in your in your crown room or whatever the hell that is. So this is Bo <laughs> Diggity. Don't you ever fucking cut me off again. Woo! Bo Diggity, there you go. Oh, goddamn go. Diggity. Wow. I uh, wow. don't want to be around when Google Voice cuts him off again. No, 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 no. Okay, I think that's all the fan stuff, right? I think. Oh, are we good? shit. Let's, let's make it quick here. Indy Minute, sir. Oh. Indy Minute for this week in pro wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I'm going to talk about here on this week's Indy Minute is our good friends at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. They have a good, uh, very interesting event coming up this weekend for Bloody Harvest 4. On October 13th, uh, the main event being uh, Jimmy Nuts uh, in a three-way against Kato and, Kato! Shane, 
and uh, Shane Taylor. Uh, also, former WCW star Lodi will be appearing at that event. Uh, so it's definitely going to be one to check out. Go to rwalive.com uh, for more information. Sorgatron Meanie will be there. Hot Wheels will be there. The whole crew. It's, it's going to be a fun time. Yes, Someone's yes, it will be. Chachi's distracting sword. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, go to RWA Live to uh, get information on uh, how you can go to that event in West Wheels. Newton, Pennsylvania. Wheels, give us the lowdown. Why do people need to go? Why do people need to go? Oh, my That's God. That's Sorg. Um, I don't know if you <laughs> follow your Facebook much, but I follow mine. Oh, what's Facebook? You know why I follow Facebook? What? Because... You had the fans bitching at the former star, Ryan Edmonds, about being a chicken and not coming to the show Saturday to face Lodi, because they say Lodi is the better man, which I agree. But why else do they need to come? Because it may be Shane Taylor's last wrestling show ever. 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 Uh, no, yeah, no, it, it should be a fun show. Uh, we, we got a big surprise with Shane Douglas showing up last uh, last month. And, uh, and, and, you know, Lodi was really cool. You know, Lodi was a guy that I didn't, I'm like, who, you know, who's this guy? He was the sign guy. What the hell? But he's really awesome. Really Don't you talk shit show. about Lodi. I'm not going to talk shit about Lodi. I'm putting him <laughs> over. I mean, but I, I did not expect much going into it. I'm just saying from the, well, I was not there the first time he was there. I was there the second time and I, I really like, he was really cool with the people. The people loved him. So, uh, yeah. And I was a fan of the flock too. I'm just like, you know, Lodi and Lenny I'm just Lane like, dude, it's like of the 12 year. years later. I didn't think anything would be much out of the flock leftovers. But this guy uh, and Lenny proves, Lane were proves a all that couple. wrong. Or all he that got the right. flock out of there. What's, he, got, he got the flock out of there. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, it's great. It's great. It's a fun show, and we have a blast every time we get down there. I'm sad. I'm so sad that there we, we're double booked for like the rest of the year after this. So this will be... Chachi Ooh. and Sorg's last RWA show of the year. <laughs> Chachi and Sorg's person. last run. This is our last run, so we, it better be a good one, Wheels. I'm depending but, but, on you but, to make but, sure this is a good show. Make our last say, show a good one. Right. Don't let Chachi get kicked in the balls again. No, I think I'm safe. I think Chachi's safe. I don't know about you, Sorg. We never know. <laughs> oh, I mean, shit. We don't know. But, but, yes, you guys won't be there for two months. And you know what? Doesn't mean Shorgatron Media won't be there. No, no, definitely represent still, uh, but we just can't be there because of prior engagements. But aside from that, what else is going on, Russell fan? Uh, also, um, a good friend of the Mayhem Show, Alexander Carr, sent in a report, a uh, sh- short little uh, thing that uh, about uh, uh, Willie Mack, who is a uh, great performer down in the Southern California area, a phenomenal wrestler. Uh, he, uh, he attended an event. Uh, I'm just going to uh, go off with the email he sent. Hey there, 10 percenters. Uh, this past Sunday, I went to Willie Mack's tribute show for his father, Foots, and it was an amazing night of the family that is pro wrestling coming together for a good cause. How does the show itself include appearances by Scorpio Sky, Brian Kendrick, Shelly Martinez, and a lot of Southern California talent performing. Great matches were had, including some stellar tag matches and a Lucha Libre uh, 10-man tag that saw action spilling throughout the building. The night ended with a battle royal, won by Willie Mack, who finished everything with a brief speech thanking everybody for the support. It was awesome, and it was totally worth it. It's great seeing wrestlers and fans coming together like this. Uh, Alex K. Occupy Pro Wrestling. So, yeah, um, for those that do not know who Willie Mack is, God forbid you, um, the what? dude is fucking ph- the dude is phenomenal. Uh, he, he's definitely one of like the big upstarts. He's getting a lot of traction, not just in the Southern California area, but you know all around the U.S. The dude's phenomenal in the ring. And uh, recently, he uh, suffered the passing of his father. Uh, the event was held in order to uh, raise funds be- uh, to uh, provide him with a funeral. Um, and, and from what I hear, it went on amazingly. So uh, we wish the best out to Willie Mack and uh, hope that uh, everything is going uh, good from there. Uh, so definitely go check out Willie Mac because if you if you've never seen this man before, it is a treat, and I highly encourage you to uh, check the man out. Uh, and the final thing I want to talk about on this week's Indie Minute is uh, a big, interesting news that came out of Ring of Honor recently. Um, it was announced, uh, I believe, this past weekend, uh, the uh, sort of a shakeup in the role of the creative department, I guess, for Ring of Honor. 
that Jim Cornette will no longer be a part of the Ring of Honor creative team uh, and is being re, uh, re-tooken up, I guess, by the uh, head trainer of the Ring of Honor Wrestling Academy, uh, uh, Hunter Johnson. Uh, uh, from, many, many fans know him as Delirious. Um, uh, Cornette stepping down. He's still involved in the company. He still involves, is involved a lot with the day-to-day operations and a lot of various other stuff that goes on with Ring of Honor. But apparently he will no longer be a part of the creative team. Um, and this is getting sort of sort of mixed uh, th- uh, thoughts from people. You know, some people think this was a good idea. Others are, you know, still very interested to see where it comes because Delirious Delirious does have some past experience with booking and uh, doing some of the creative stuff for uh, Ring of Honor storylines and etc. Um, so yeah, it. I I want to I want to see how this is going to change and how uh, you know. How if it's going to be any different for Ring of Honor? Apparently, things really shook up at their last weekend of tapings, uh, especially with uh, the match. Uh, there was the main event uh, between Kevin Steen and Jay Lethal, where the match ended in a no contest after Kevin Steen uh, spit on Jay Lethal's mother, who was in the crowd, and basically all hell broke loose. Um, it and it's I I want to see. I don't know if that was uh, of Delirious's part of him now being part of creative, or that was still under the Cornette era. But I want to see where this goes, and I want to see uh, what changes are made, and uh, if they're uh, going to be any beneficial for you know the overall product. Oh, go, go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, from the bit I've been uh, watching of ROH and, and here and reading uh, conversation about it. Uh, so, I mean, I haven't been watching it regularly, but I've been kind of getting back into it. I know a lot of the complaints about the the Ring of Honor is like you know smoke. Ring of Smoky Mountain was was the phrase that people got out of it. And it's a very it's a very old school. It style. is it is. But I watched this past episode and, and uh, this week, and I don't know if that's before or after the the regime change. I, I imagine not. Um, uh, yeah, probably before. Because their turnaround, I know, is like a couple weeks on new episodes after a taping, um, from what I've seen. Uh, but uh, and, and I also saw some conversation because people were like, "Well, you had like what a thirty five minute good match between Steen and Steen and Jay Lethal, and then you had like that kind of quash finish at the end. You still had a good match, and it sounds like it was like a memorable finish. So I wouldn't be mad at, about that at all. I mean, look at you know how we felt about the CM Punk John Cena finish uh, last yeah. month. You know, we were all like, "This is great." You know, yes, it ended the way it did, but that was that doesn't happen. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. People are very. Uh Kevin, the whole, they're definitely pushing Kevin Steen as their top guy, and he's definitely building as something that's much different than what Ring of Honor is about. Yeah, it's fine. And, and it's getting, it's, yeah, it's, I, 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 I like it. It's getting like a lot of conflicting reports, though, of people that aren't fans of it, but pe- there are some people that are fans of it. It's of not it. for everybody. It really it, isn't. And, and Ring of Honor, uh, LB, I think you could speak to this. You're a longtime watcher of it. It was for something different, it, it's absolutely. done so much stuff. That has influenced what we see today. I took a good look at uh, NXT this past week, um, and I saw what we were doing a program with uh, Cassius Ono, uh, formerly Chris Hero, and uh, Richie Steamboat. Richie Steamboat, yeah, yeah. I keep wanting to say Ricky, but that's his father. Um, I, really good stuff, and there's a little bit of a feel of the Ring of Honor style. I think going into stuff like that, you know, it's definitely being influenced. Look at the stuff we're seeing with CM Punk these days, you know, something different, you know, uh, you know, the good stuff we can still call out about TNA is definitely ring of honor influenced. Um, maybe this, this is what it needs to do. Ring of honor needs to be the different thing, not the lamer thing. And that's what it's been for several years. Like we're pure wrestling, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. You guys, nobody, everybody looks the same and I don't give a shit. You're not, yeah, you're, not, you're not putting the matches on TV that made you make a name for yourselves all these years, you know, and they need, but now they're starting to kind of squeeze those in there and have good matches. Right. Um, the opening match between uh, Adam Cole and again, some guy with the generic name, but he was fucking awesome. Uh, this week I thought was tremendous. I, I, yeah. I, I'm really I, big on Adam Cole though. They, they have phenomenal talent. They in, do. Uh, they do. And there was a lot of, there's a, there's a period there. Uh, where there was a lot of talent that I'm like, why the hell is this guy in Ring of Honor? You know, right. where it just didn't fit. You know, it was like the character or whatever is too, like, I don't want to say too bad indie or something, but yeah, yeah, it's and yeah, and it's it's 
and you know, people are going to be conflicted about that. People are going to feel different ways. I'm a big fan of Adam Cole, and you know, he's I, could, I see, apparently from what I heard from you, you know, he did phenomenal stuff in Ring of Honor, but his character in Ring of Honor is so much different than what he does on the rest of the independent scene. No, oh, it's Alex's um, guys, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, it's it's I I love to see them you know try something different with these guys mm-hmm. and the talents there. I mean, the, the, there's you know a plethora of amazing talent for Ring of Honor. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're big PPC. Uh, he is in the chat. Says good ROH is good stuff. Hard to get the eye pay per views, but whatever. Yeah, that's the other um, thing. He also agrees Rich, Richie's uh, Steamboat versus Cassius Ono was great. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, also, Adam Cole is great. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it said they got good stuff, it, but I'm really feel my issue with them right now is I feel like there's a large detachment. Like WWE, you could sit there and watch WWE, and I think be happy with what's going on and get enough of it if you're just watching the free television show uh, and not get the pay per views. Or it's easy for you to get the pay per views because they're kind of really accessible. Or I'll get the DVD in the month. Or yeah. or, or I know where all the streaming sites are. Um, Ring of Honor, you know, whatever your case may be, it's accessible and you can follow it. Uh, Ring yeah, of, I feel yeah. like I feel like there's there's this big gap between I'm catching you, I'm the random wrestling fan catching you on five o'clock on a Saturday as it is here in Pittsburgh, or late night on a Sunday, or what, what Saturday morning, wherever, early morning, wherever yeah. it is in your area. I was looking at some of the times; they're real interesting, um, and their listings. But I think. That those people sit there and watch it, like the you know the friends of ours, uh, uh, Sean and Munz and all them, uh, that are like, yeah, I, I'm really digging. It. It's it's great stuff to just kind of watch, you know, randomly. But then all this stuff happens that's going straight to DVD or iPay per view, and iPay per view has been nothing but problems. I, I I think I hear about a problem every time they have one. They've uh, had very is a very, technical very problem, issues. and you're not a professional fucking company if you're still having these problems. I'm sorry, it's just you can't do that. You just can't do it. It needs to just work, you know. Um, TNA's mostly figured it out. It's rarely I see a problem with TNA, and it was because they were doing the crazy uh, uh, screen vision theater thing, which I'll never fucking go back to again. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a horrible experience uh, for lockdown. Um, it, it was skipping. It was like it was like I was getting. Honestly, it would have been better if I went home and watched it on a live stream because it skipped so much. Okay, and I paid fifteen dollars to get in there. Um, Actually, a little less because they thought lockout was out at the same time and they gave me the wrong ticket. But uh, mm. they, that just meant I couldn't get my free T-shirt. But OK. Now, anybody else got anything uh, uh, to go on Ring of Water that I've kind of let out on it before we head out? <laughs> Nope, nope, okay. Nope, nope. okay. But yeah, just uh, I'll keep you updated here on the Indie Minute to see if anything develops from that. Uh, and that, my friends, is your Indie Minute for this week. I, I have to be fair, I, I like... Ring of Honor. I want it to <laughs> succeed. Okay, I just don't want to be. I'm not completely. We got it, dumb, we got I'm it. not dump hating on Ring of Honor, but there's no, just some things no, that are just like, man, do better, please. Criticism is a good. You're thing. doing well. Do awesome. <laughs> I want awesome. TNA. <laughs> Fuck you, TNA. You fucked it all up. Um, <laughs> all right, with funny. that, let's go to WS Gold and take a look at Mountain State Madness 3 from two weeks ago. And now available on digital download and DVD at circuitronmedia.com slash store. Go check it out. It's a great, fun show. And we'll be right back with Remember When? I'm still farting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so just looking over. All right. I just stopped. Sorry. It just wouldn't stop. Chachi, Deb. I was gonna try to uh, read the uh, the Spanish oh, part. Oh, I don't know some of these words. I know that's why I. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I made you. And then I realized something wrong with this cord. God damn it, wrestle cord. fan. Where'd you go? Who's, who's talking to LB and being funny? Hey, you told me to go. Hey guys, we're back. Thanks for coming back. (laughs) 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 It's time for that segment we all love. uh, Time to look back. Remember when? (laughs) 
I remember. Uh, well, it, you know, of course, there was a big altercation. Uh, there was a lot of talk, I know, on the Facebook open uh, board uh, last night. 37 comments, I think I saw when I just looked at it, uh, about what was going on. Of course, in a row? It, it, in a row? <laughs> Sorry, I had you muted there for the indie minute. Um, uh... But, uh, yeah, of course, CM Punk, we'll talk about this more at length after uh, the Minute of Mayhem. Uh, but uh, CM Punk, of course, got an altercation with a fan uh, during the end of Raw there uh, when he ran out to the crowd. So I thought we'd look back. Uh, I'm going to say favorite. These are never like a good situation, but <laughs> memorable fan altercations. This can be something you saw on, on TV, on a pay-per-view, or in person in some cases, uh, since I know a few of us attend a lot of wrestling shows uh, uh, between all of us here. Uh, so I thought I'd go around and... and, and, and uh, well, you know, just kind of throw out some of the most interesting stuff we've seen over the times. So, uh, when it comes to mind, uh, uh, Clearfield with IWC, uh, I think it was the Clearfield Cataclysms, which was a tremendous, tremendous name, by the way. Um, there was, I think it was the second one, and there was a match. They had the uh, title match right before intermission. Uh, no guardrails. That'll be important here. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was a title match between champion Jimmy DeMarco against J-Rock. Uh, we won't remember J-Rock. Remember the half an hour. We just kind of let him talk on here one time. Um, about Jake Snake Roberts. Uh, and uh, it, it was, so Shane Taylor uh, was was uh, on at ringside. Vicky Gambino, uh, uh, friend of the show. Drink. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and they were, you know, pulling bad guy stuff on the outside, you know, really, really getting at Jimmy DeMarco. Uh, at one point, uh, I can't remember either Shane or J-Rock. Uh, went and reached for a chair from one of the fans. And it was I think she was a bigger set lady, right? Um, um, would not give him the chair. Would pull it back. Would not give up the chair. So uh, J-Rock turns around and starts going at Jimmy DeMarco. And uh, he gets up. She gets up in, uh, you know, not much force. It was rather gingerly. Uh, hit him in the back with a chair. Uh, after that, uh, uh, shortly after, again... Uh, on the same side of the ring and everything, uh, this older fellow got into it with uh, uh, Shane Taylor. Um, so who? And I remember, you know, during intermission, he came over to me and asked, "Did you get that on tape?" I'm definitely going to buy this one. <laughs> I don't think either made it. I think, uh, well, maybe the chair shot, but I think both were edited by uh, uh, Tony F over there, at Digital Horizons. So, uh, yeah. Hey, let me just point out that out of everyone in IWC at the time. Mm -hmm. J Rock and Shane Taylor are the most imposing would people. Would not that were there. be the ones <laughs> that I try to attack. Some of the most imposing people that you would run into. Uh, needless to say, everybody, all the ring crew was pissed because now they have to bring the guardrails from then on, which really you should be in the first place. Right? <clears throat> Wheels. Shh. <laughs> hey, hey, some some well, some groups can be on this shit with the Listen. guardrails, but you gotta be. You gotta be on your shit. Listen, when I lay out an Asian lady, <laughs> it's not I will gonna laugh be. Not, I, I am not talking didn't about you like in the bedroom. Did you like check her one time? Yeah. Like, it's not gonna be my fault when I have to. Well, lay I can't. Out. I can't get to you. Know, I can't say much because one time my body checked feel bad for getting my way but back yes, when I was did. just doing I camera. Oh man, I'm like get out of my way. It's just uh, okay. um. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will lay out an old Asian lady if she. Keeps getting in my way. Yeah, I think after that, her getting in your way, Chachi, which, speaking of remembering when people altercations, that woman gets in the way a lot. Explain, yeah. you know, explain. This, 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 this is Asian lady. She's always where she shouldn't be. There's no guardrails at RWA. Oh, uh, it's it, a smaller place. Okay. But she is way too close to the action when, trying to get the picture. Listen. <laughs> uh, when we go to these shows, uh, RWA specifically, there's no guardrail. Uh, and that's the only one. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the only one without a guardrail. Uh, so this is the only one that we have an issue with, or I have an issue with. But if my area is right up against the ring. Yeah. yeah. With you don't my camera. It's not like you're anymore. sitting on their lap or anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's my work area. Yes. If you're a fan, mm -hmm. I shouldn't almost run into you running around the ring apron. Yeah. Yeah. 
you are in my way. It does always yeah. worry me at shows like that, and and it's not it's not just them. There's other ones where there's like kids running to the bathroom at ringside. I mean, I'm just waiting for one of the time one of these guys flipping over the top rope and just clobbers one of these kids. Oh, I've got creative fans or something like that. I, I seriously am, and, and really, yep. it, it's the fan stupidity at that point because it's like you know, it's kind of a danger zone. You know, yep. Watch oh. it all night. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's not, not much you can do except be careful during the matches don't get up during the matches and run along ringside no running please stop running by my equipment god i uh i don't have a problem with asians i don't have a problem with old people <laughs> you're um, just describing the lady but i want <laughs> i want this lady to get drop kicked <laughs> Oh. I, the best. Can I spin off of that a little bit? The best was the one show where she was particularly annoying and in our way and in the wrestler's way a lot of the times. Yes. She walked up. It was the one where uh, Shane Taylor was get, was going off and beating up. I think he was, he was beating up referees and security guards and stuff. Yep. And it and was like actually hard. actually went like back by the sound booth after somebody uh, like plowing through all the chairs and the fans have like, gotten up and stuff. It was really just kind of like a, a throwing out. Say, Shh, the old lady walks up to him <laughs> and like, it's asking for an autograph in the middle of all of this of this going on. He just slaps it out of her hand. <laughs> And that was just like justification for everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did everyone pop? Right, let's but, bring uh, it around. Oh, you got another one there, Chuck? Uh, no, I, I actually don't it. have any real like wrestler fan interactions. No, like nothing. I mean, I've met wrestlers, but that's, but it, but anything on TV or anything you remember? I, uh, the only one that I I keep going back to. Is the dumbass on WWE that slid into the ring in the middle of a Ryback match? The one that, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I like it, the way I work is I watch the wrestling. I come here. I talk about the wrestling. I forget what happened until they show me what happened on the next show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. It, it's not. It's just. It has to be memorable, or else I'm gonna forget. Same thing that's going on with Matthew Card. Right. Collins. And so. Yeah, and it's been, what, two, three weeks now? And I still remember that small-ass guy trying to crawl in the ring during a ride back I remember match. most of the times, like, this happened a lot in WCW during the NWO days, and usually they got their ass kicked by whoever was in the ring. Hulk Hogan has beat up a few different people from the side of the ring. And I, uh, it, it's just, you're, you're in their territory, it's off-limits. I would oh, like yeah. to uh, bring attention to a tweet that, Joe's friend of the show, Joe Dombrowski, sent out Drink. an hour ago. Uh, he said, what we have learned from last night's CM Punk incident, clearly WWE desperately needs to rehire Jim Dotson. Who? Was that the guy <laughs> with the like the hat? The security guy with the backwards golf cap. Yeah! yeah. He was everywhere. The, the beast that I... Last time I, last time I recall security at, at a Raw show that really stuck out was it's just... You know, I'm not anti-obese or anything. I have a little chunky myself. It's just a super fat guy that went running after somebody because, like, some fan was, like, kind of coming over. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, that guy is not imposing in the right way. <laughs> yes, we need <laughs> Ralphus, Riz. We need Ralphus. Ralphus DJ Lunchbox, shit. Papa Lunchbox. What, do you have any altercations in mind? Uh, just one. One really sticks out to me. It's uh, It was an old episode of Raw. I don't remember what it's match was going Virgil. on. Or, um, What's that? <laughs> it's going to be Virgil. It's gonna include Virgil. <laughs> I wish. I wish it didn't. What's the no, score, no, buddy? no. Um, <laughs> no, it, it, it was this random episode of Raw. It was like in the uh, mid two thousands, maybe two thousand four or five or something. I don't remember the exact date, but anyway, um, there was something going on. I think it was after a match, and this fat fuck with this uh, greasy long hair at a Ring of Honor shirt jumps the uh, jumps the guard. <laughs> And fucking just starts running at the wrestlers and all the all the security tackles him. I don't know what happened to that guy. With any luck, he OD'd and died a terrible death. Um, but that's that's the one that sticks out the most for me. I'm not he did for- it the next week, too. He showed up next week backstage. Wow. Wow. I, I, I'm not familiar with this one from the chat. Uh, Alexander Carr's RVD versus Eddie Guerrero. Was there a... Oh, that was mine. That was the one I was going to say. Oh, uh, go ahead then. Because it was a, it was a Raw in 2002. They were having a ladder match. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes fans, you know, they jump the rail, but they usually get caught before. Some of them, like the Ryback match, get in the ring. This guy, as Eddie Guerrero is climbing the ladder, gets in the ring and pushes the ladder over and knocks Eddie oh, off. Oh, yeah. 
Oh wow! Hey guys, I actually got the clip in the chat room. I can't bring it up. Though. How does how does how does security like stop that? It's like yeah, yeah. yeah. How oh, do wow. you like get to that point? Yeah, he hey. got, oh, and he got socked by Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> Holy crap! You see him just come at him on this video. I'm sorry, I can't. I apologize <laughs> for the lack of visuals this week, but I, I there was a computer problem. Was that Russell fan is on? No, that uh, yeah, I think it was. Well, maybe. I feel Let's like see, at that point. Uh, I don't. I I am not in any way, shape, or form saying that it does look like a raw. I I'm associated with RWA other than filming for them. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the wrestling companies that we work for, it's a partnership. Yeah, it, it, it's it's flat out noted as a partnership. So I think that in a company like WWE, even if a camera guy sees someone jumping the barrier. It starts running towards the ring. Close line him. Yeah, it's something. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I mean, it it doesn't take much to just reach out and grab him and yank him. I back. wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it on the camera guy. Those guys. Have you seen the cameras they carry? It's a bit more than what we're using. Maybe not the WWE. Uh, so, I mean, Use yeah, the cameras but, then. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just hit him. With I the mean, camera, it doesn't you know? take much effort to put your leg out and trip him. Well, yeah, if it came by him or anything like. I that. I mean, I'm not saying run after if he's like. 10 well, feet away, you know, something but... always happens, though. Something always happens because how many times and, and uh, you never know, you never know at what level, especially you experience this. We don't know at what level people know what's going to happen, especially like the, the camera guys and stuff. I know stuff scripted, etc. Uh, but. And stuff changes at the last minute, because uh, anytime you see somebody jump over the barrier, the first thing pops in your mind. OK, is this real or is it a work? And it takes you two seconds to realize, well, that guy's too skinny or fat to be a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it goes like that. Uh, in indie indie shows, all bets are fucking off. Okay, because like <laughs> it's half of the wrestlers are too fat or skinny to be a wrestler. Yep. Um, so you just don't know. Like, who is this guy? Well, Why sorry. am I supposed to care? I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. I'm sorry, sir. But if Asian grandma gets in the ring, I'm okay. Pretty I sure got I a problem with Asian grandma. Okay. Um, or spirit that old woman. Or skinny redneck with a flip cam. Oh, yes. oh, don't get me started on that guy. Mm -hmm. I, I am. No. Tell me See, about this no. skinny redneck with a flip mm -hmm. so This is, is turning into another that. remember when kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, I, no, I'm not getting that on the show. I'm not getting that. <laughs> remember when Sword is, broke is another up discussion cam. for maybe we'll do it on gold or something. <laughs> Mm. Uh, okay, I think everybody <laughs> gave an answer. We'll get to the news story after Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem, and I vent a little bit. Wrestling Mayhem Show fans and friends across the land, it's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, TNA. <laughs> I know I start with this every week, but fuck you guys are maddening. Um, last week's show was actually better. The only problem was it seemed like a go-home show for Bound for Glory. And in case I've miscounted, there's another week of impact. Um, I don't care about King Mo, who wears Madison Rain's tiara to the ring, which is nice of her to let him borrow it. Um, I don't care about the world title match. <sighs> the aces and eights. Like, th this is TNA's biggest pay per view of the year. And. They really, like, the only match I'm actually looking forward to is the Triple Threat Tag Match, just because that has a lot of fun people in it. It's very odd. Uh, the only way... I said this in my review of the show last week, and I said this in the Hangout on Thursday. I think at this point, the only way TNA can really redeem me is if they do some form of... Bully Ray and Sting beat the Ace and Eights. And Sting and Hogan are so impressed with Bully that they throw him into the title match. And then with the help of Ace and Eights, Bully wins the TNA Championship. And Bully's revealed to be the leader. Along with Joseph Parks, Abyss, you know, whatever. I think that would... That would be fresh. Because... Right now, TNA is not taking advantage of the best character they have in Bully Ray. Bully Ray is 
Uh, I mean, with all apologies to Austin Aries, the angle he's in with Jeff Hardy sucks. There's no story. They're trying to do a CM Punk thing, but they really can't because Aries hasn't been in TNA established long enough to be CM Punk. It's just, like, Jeff Hardy is an equivalent of John Cena. I understand that. I get that. That's fine. But Austin Aries is no CM Punk. Everyone loves Austin Aries. It's not like he's been held down. He's been main eventing pay-per-view after pay-per-view. It, it's not It's not the same thing, and they're stupid for trying to make it the same thing. What they should have done is maybe have, as, as much as they don't want to, bring up Jeff's past and say Aries, like have Aries say that Jeff doesn't deserve to be here. He doesn't deserve to be on the main stage. And, you know, have a kind of realistic angle that way. But, um, yeah. So, apart from that, I don't really know how TNA can bring me back into the fight. Uh, hey, I want to point job, out Mike. that yeah, with, as, with as easy as it seems to uh, get into the ringside area of wrestling shows, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying I want to see this. Well, I, I mean, I want to see it, but I don't want to see like any details. <laughs> <laughs> but why hasn't anyone streaked a wrestling show yet? Wait a minute, I swore I've seen one. I have yet to well, see there's a no, There's no there's reason. All the, down all the people that happens. are mostly naked anyway. But I mean, mm-hmm. I just want to see like a, a drunk naked guy climb the barrier and run around the ring, or halfway around the <laughs> ring, as far as he gets. <laughs> well, like, like, uh, like, like stop. Just watch, a, just watch a Batista match. <laughs> like stop in front <laughs> of the announcers and gyrate his crotch and then try to take off more. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler match. Everybody would just think that Naked Midian came back. <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyways, yes, yeah, so as you can yeah, tell, the conversation's still going on. Thanks. On who's in the ring? <laughs> Thanks, Bad Mike, for the minute of mayhem. Uh, since it was actually over six minutes of mayhem, uh, you can find a conclusion of that over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com in a post. Uh, so uh, mm-hmm. let's get into it. Okay, the reason that we came up with all this crazy stuff is the altercation that happened last night. Uh, CM Punk, of course, you know, had his thing with Vince McMahon. Everybody ran out and scared him off, and he uh, went out to the crowd. And you actually caught it a little bit of it on TV in the background of him uh, back. I, I think what did somebody said it was a back spin fist of some sort. <laughs> Is that the yeah. description? It, it, I it thought they were like explaining a, spin, a street like, fighter move. Like elbow. I, mean, I thought it was like a back elbow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's actually video. Uh, Wrestle Let's fan. break it down. <laughs> Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Wrestle fan. I'll, I'll pull up that video, and, and I'm sorry you can't. Uh, so. There was a big conversation that happened to uh, uh, around this thing, um, and I can't remember where I'm getting the video from. Oh, we it's on our Facebook, isn't it? Oh, uh, I, uh, yeah. I'm couple, sorry, I pulled it up. I pulled it up and completely forgot where I put it. There's, there's a couple videos. There's um, yeah, well, this is the fan cam one that really shows what happens. I'm not going to mess around with the other ones. If you want to go look for them, you can. But yeah. here we see uh, it's obviously a fan cam. They're holding the iPhone the wrong fucking way. <laughs> uh, Lesnar Italian. You see, there's a, you see that guy from the, see Brock Lesnar T-shirt guy. Fuck that yep. guy. He's an asshole. He's Speaking, starting to get a fight. Uh, dude, and it looks like guy in the back accidentally hit him, and he's backing up. He just wants to get on TV or whatever, right? Bam! I apparently bumped him in the back of the head while he was putting his glasses on, and uh, got clobbered. Can we talk about Brock Lesnar t-shirt guy, or who I assume is Brock Lesnar t-shirt guy? That's who he is to the world in the internet now, sir. So, well, no. Uh, well, not completely, Sorg, because he has a name. <laughs> no, he apparently, doesn't. Apparently, You're fucking lying. Uh, uh, if you go to at Dario uh, yeah, he admits that, that he, he admits that he was the one that attacked CM Punk. Yeah, he I, said he punched him in the back of the head and the kidneys. Wow. That, and yeah. he has a series of fled. tweets. He has he has a series of tweets, and from reading the tweets, fuck, do I wish that he was the one that got hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, CM Punk, I want you to reenact the end of the Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back and go to this guy's house and finish the job. Um, I, I think there was a tweet earlier this afternoon uh, where he at CM Punk saying, "You and me, one on one, bitch." Wow. Good job. Wow. Man. Really? Really? What's You're that name? lacking of testicles. You got to prove yourself this way at, with a pro at, wrestler, dude. At, he's at, he's ridiculous. I'm so, I'm so glad you're picking. I'm so glad that you're picking fight with the fake TV fighters. Way to go, guy! 
Way so, to go. So yeah, go visit at D-A-R-I-O-T-E-Y-E-S and tell him how much of a fuck stick he is. Wait, wait, wait. What, what is that? What, what was the name again? Dar- I, what Dario, I- D-A-R-I-O, Tez, T-E-Y-E-S. And his profile picture looks something of the degree of him in the sombrero, I think. Oh, God. I, yeah, I got it up on this other computer here. All right. Yeah. What are we going to do, 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 uh, what, what the fuck? Justin, he's telling Justin Labar. Get me up. There. Yeah, he was also trying to get an Wait. interview from Justin Labar. Is he trying to fight Justin yeah. Labar? I mean, I I mean, I would, I would <laughs> not put anything past Justin Labar, but... You know, don't. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy. This guy is just fucking ridiculous. Oh man. Okay. Let's. Uh. What. What do we. What message do we collectively want to uh, tell Dario Teas from the Mayhem Show? Uh. Let's see. May you get testicular cancer. I no. I, I don't wish cancer on anybody, man. That's not cool. No. Uh, he's a dick. But one no. thing I don't fuck with is cancer. Yeah. True. And baby rape. And <laughs> baby rape. <laughs> Apparently those are the lines. But, yeah. It, All right. It's an interesting situation. And I, the people were trying to decide and pick sides of this. I think there's a lot of people at fault in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them is Dario Teus. Um, the other, I, I think, is the big deal is security was not on crack with that. Like, well... They There's, even updated that if you checked Russell. Yeah, Ford. in WWE's really? apology, they did note that their um, security was not, you know, done properly. There should have been they should have been along that aisle, especially if they knew that CM Punk was going to go that way to just sort of keep the fans back and not have them do anything. Yeah, yeah usually shit. security is all over. Like, you see, like, wow, there's a lot of security down there in that corner. And you're like, okay, something's going to happen, you know. Okay, right. And whenever you see these guys come through the crowd, you see them pretty much littered every few feet with, with security. Or, or to some aspect, you yeah. know. I, I mean, and, and really, this is, this is to protect both the fans and these guys, you know, mm-hmm. as they're like taking off running up the steps which is definitely not safe making sure they don't run into some some chick with her nachos coming down you know uh i mean it just it just makes sense and they were not there you saw them kind of like skedaddle up there right after the dude got punched in the fucking face you know yeah and, and they, that's they just, and that's a, and it's it's hard to pick sides and i do side with cm punk for mm-hmm. you know acting out in that manner because it's one thing to touch a, a wrestler it's another thing to like physically shove him yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't like this guy was like was like like that guy alone should not gotten a punch for what he did. But obviously, Punk was. I mean, he's hyped up from whatever happened on the ring. He's breaking sure he's hitting his spots, whatever he's got going through his head at the time. He's hyped right. up as it is. Some dude is physically attacking him from one side, and he's it's, trying to listen to Vince. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I side and I side a majority with wrestlers in that situation that once that a fan crosses that line, they are fair game. Exactly. That they, exactly. that you they are allowed to do whatever the fuck. It's you know? a little sketchy because he is out in the crowd, but again, it, it just it's the, just it, one of but those the issue is it doesn't, it doesn't matter if somebody punched him. If somebody punches you, that's fair I game. Mean, it doesn't matter at. if you fight for a living. That's fucked up. Yeah and, yeah, and I think, uh, and I do. I the only way I will fault Punk in this is the fact that he did hit the wrong guy, and he made. And y- yes, it, adre- it could be his adrenaline was pumping. He didn't really think the whole thing through, but he he may have looked at the guy that m- took like a couple seconds to look at the guy who shoved him and then do something. Because uh, yeah, I do feel bad for the guy that actually did get hit just because he wanted to put his sunglasses on. Um. But yeah, and I, so I think there's a lot of people at fault in this, and you know, this guy is an asshat. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, he is. Like uh, my IQ is dropping as I scroll through his timeline. This guy's just a fucking meathead that's trying to make himself tough because he probably broke up with his girlfriend because he's probably slapped her in the face, and uh, you know that's just how it is. You know, he can go <laughs> but, uh, hang and, out with Ryan and Edmonds he's... and Jock Sampson and have a good old time and uh, and, and beat up defenseless wrestlers. Um, anyways, um. Is... What's that? He, what's sad is he's dumb sitting here tweeting all this stupid shit. It's helping the other fan, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, which is good. Which is WWE good. WWE It's like helping going, the other fan, and they're right, also pursuing so we know some... who hit punk. We apologize to you, go, guy. When we come back, you get free each time we come in. But we're going after this dude now. Not even that, though. 
you know, he could be pursued legally because of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, they fucking found you. You could have been just a face and a ticket that was there at the show of, mm-hmm. you know, helping a Sacramento. You know, that got away. It was like, oh, the year Brock Lesnar shirt got. But you had to go out on Twitter, Dario Teas. Now we know you are. Uh, he, somebody... I, think he even bla- I think he even bragged in one of his tweets. He's like, yeah, no one came up to me about it. I got away scot free. I'm like, good job, fuckhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another case of like people not realizing the internet is the fucking internet. <laughs> to quote well, the yeah, social network. They, said they did have. Oh, go, uh, go, go, Wheels. The, the police there for the incident. Mm-hmm. So. The police are investigating it. Good job, Dario. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and you know, you're at least somewhere in the area of Sacramento if you showed up to that show. Sorry, uh, there, Chach. Uh, to quote the Social Network, the internet's written in ink. Oh, you can't erase that shit. It's there. No, nah. there are so many. Do you realize how many people have screen capped all of your tweets to show how much of a fucking idiot? Twitter are? has all your tweets, and if there's hate shit on there, if there's your, if there is a legal thing, Twitter will give your shit up on a subpoena, your dude. Tweets are in the Library of Congress, you asshat. <laughs> <laughs> you just got archive.org, bitch. <laughs> oh. All I, right, that's enough of that. I am going to Sacramento, and I am kicking this guy in the dick. <laughs> we'll uh, see. Like just Samson a chorus line of dick kicking. All Dear right. Wrestling what? Mayhem Show fans. Chorus line of dick kicking? <laughs> yes! <laughs> you Dear, know, like the Rockettes or whatever the fuck they're called. Dear Wrestling Mayhem Show fans, send Chachi to Sacramento. PayPal us monies to buy the plane ticket, and I will ensure that this jackass never re- produces in his life. Or at the very least, make him cry on Twitter. <laughs> make him cry. <laughs> Care of the Mayhem show, please. So. What were those old hashtags? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. What else is there to uh, talk about? I, all I see is people updating their pictures on, on Facebook, unfortunately. Um, um, parents are dumb. Parents are dumb. <laughs> Where do we start? Uh, was, Where do we start with that one? There was a report on TMZ of all places of a uh, some woman don't know her fucking name. Um, she she apparently won you know that NBC show Shark Tank where they you know they have an idea and you're I fucking whatever. Uh, I love Shark Tank. Don't put it down, man. No, no, no. no. I'm just saying. She, just, just Always go with Mark Cuban's offer. That's all I got to say. <laughs> but basically, she went with her eight year old son to a WWE house show in Anaheim um, during where her son, you know, eight-year-old son, brought a sign that says, Seamus, you rock, with a picture of Seamus on it, with the World Heavyweight title, and he's smiley. Um, and, he, and she has a picture with her son with the uh, said uh, uh, sign. Uh, well, Alberto Del Rio has this match uh, and comes out, notices the sign, uh, and proceeds to, well, he takes it and tries to rip it up. Can't really rip it up, so Ricardo rips it up for him. Um, and the kid's very upset. He starts to cry. So this lady, uh, because it's such a big fucking deal, uh, decides to go to TMZ and complain to the fa- uh, reports her story to TMZ about the fact that uh, Alberto Del Rio made her son cry. Uh, and stole his sign. She also wrote a strongly worded letter strongly to WWE, worded. Um, uh, complaining about their performers and uh, how they upset her son. Uh, and WWE gave them a response back uh, saying something to the degree of, uh, I know our characters were, uh, uh, or, uh, our performers were performing in the way of their characters, but we sincerely apologize uh, for any misunderstanding. Uh, That's very, very kindly oh, sorry. how I would tell this woman who I don't oh, I don't complain. <laughs> All right, first. first. I don't compl- uh, yeah, no, okay, this is, this is, they have a foreign Deep letter. Breath. We're sorry for the bullshit you just wrote a strong, uh, let, strongly worded letter to us about. We really don't give a fuck about your problem, but just so you'll shut up, we apologize. <laughs> That's how I that's how the I legal department works. That's how legal works. It, it, it's the fucking society we live in. At least they, I don't. At least she's not suing over the matter. Yet. Oh no! Yeah, but I don't like to complain a lot about the whole PG WWE because I get it and no, I no, understand. No, 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 no. I this has nothing listen, to do listen, with PG WWE. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
I understand that that's the market they're going for, and I understand that's why they have Saturday Morning Slam. It's a great show, and it's awesome. And, you know, kids, you know, being influenced with wrestling is great. But this is not, like... So heels are supposed to not act like heels because children. That's the fucking moral of this story. I think I like to think of it as the heels are doing too good of a job, Russell fan. <laughs> Apparently. Mm-hmm. But apparently, um, <laughs> yeah, strongly, with that. <laughs> it's, I, I, I have no words. I have no words. <laughs> I am broken. I am broken. Broke. <laughs> Lady, I'm proud of you. You broke the Russell fan. We haven't been able to do that. No, no, it happens. Maybe, maybe if your child. Do you, want, you have you also, been in the also, hangout? Have you, have you been on Facebook? It happens. No, it does happen. <laughs> by, by the way, Seamus apparently replied to the mother on Twitter uh, saying that the next time they are in town, uh, they will, uh, Seamus wants to give him a comp ticket and also get a chance to meet him. Um, but also, <laughs> but the best was uh, she uh, targeted Alberto Del Rio on Twitter as well and Ricardo Rodriguez, which, in, <laughs> which Ricardo Rodriguez, with the best reply ever, LOL, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you retweet that? No, I didn't. I saw that. I, I'm like, what the hell was that about? That's, that will make sense. Yeah, so. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Okay, what else is going on in the wrestling world? Oh, uh, wow. There's a pay-per-view this weekend. It's kind of supposed to be a big deal. Can I care? Am I allowed to not <laughs> give a fuck about this? I, I know there's yeah. a friend of a show or two on this thing, but damn, man. Damn. I want. I, I was contemplating actually. I I literally thought for one second because I saw the whole them doing the movie theater thing, and I looked up the places they're showing the movies in Texas. It's like the weirdest fucking towns. It always is, dude. It always is. Um, like I'm not gonna drive an hour forty five to go watch your shitty fucking pay per view on apparently something that that is worse than a stream. You know, <laughs> like no. <laughs> it was, and it was, and it was. You know, I'm sorry. First hand experience. You can't get your shit together for this thing for 15 bucks a pop. Fuck you. You know, um, when you're not in like San Antonio or Austin or like you know, like sort of even like like a uh, college station or something like that. When you're in like fucking Luling, where there's like a hundred people. You know, you know, I, <laughs> you can't get too big on that because it's it's all about contracts and the chains and everything. I think Carmike's one of the chains, so that's like the only one that out here that had it. Um, like, I mean, you're talking about stuff where, like, you know, for WWE pay per views, if you're in New York City, Mike, uh, you know, complains about this all the time. If you are in New York City, you can't find a place that carries the pay per view. You know, where we York have to go City. in Pittsburgh. We have to go for a fucking like hour out of our way, probably more than an hour out of our way to go to that Buffalo Wild Wings out in bumfuck nowhere in Greensburg. Uh, Greensburg is that where that was? Yeah. Wherever mm-hmm. the fuck that was, that. Like there's Amish people and shit. Um, <laughs> that's right. it's green that's where I gotta go for a pay per view. Are you seriously? I'm in Pittsburgh, a wrestling town, New York City, the biggest fucking wrestling town. Are they are they are they playing the pay per view on a mimeograph? Like what's going on here? <laughs> mimeo. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, a mimeograph. Wrestle fan. I, I think that's what Amish points. people use. He's I don't got know. fifty points. For, for the use of the word mimeograph. <laughs> somebody, put, somebody put mimeograph in some context in the title for today, please. Um, all right, we, we are looking at it. I'm looking at it. Yes, I'm looking at it. Um, so we got uh, uh, aces and eights. So apparently Sting and Bu- Bully Ray are going to fight a stack of cards, according to this picture. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting be enough. Actually, I think I'd buy the pay-per-view on that one. Um, of course, the main event, uh, Jeff Hardy versus Austin Aries. Can I look at you know, I've had this over here for a while. This is uh, the first Ring of Honor show I went to, Manhattan Center. Tremendous. Uh, I think Brian Danielson and uh, Nigel McGuinness were... Uh, in a three-way with somebody else I don't, re- don't remember. Oh, wait, here's the card, actually, so I can actually tell you. Uh, oh, no, it was a four-way. Tyler Black, Nigel McGuinness, Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, WWE, WWE, WWE announcer for ROH. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Oh, why did I? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to like point out like like the names on the back of this from again. This was like 2008, and uh, and again I'm going down. Uh, well, announcer, uh, WWE, WWE, or uh, uh, TNA champion. You know, it, it's it's just interesting. Yeah, this is your farm league for everybody else. Uh, that's what's happening there. Uh, but no main event. Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries. I don't care. I mean, I, <laughs> uh, the kids with diabolical armbands care. Uh, so I'm sure. I'm really sure. Feel. Austin. I'm I'm so angry right now. I should not be this angry. I'm sorry to bring the show down. Uh, You're but, not excited for Bobby Roode versus James Storm in a whatever the fuck stipulation match it is with King Mo as the special enforcer. I'm curious. Okay, I'll tell you what I am excited for. You're I'm going to put the positive spin on this. Uh, that Samoa sarcastic. Joe kicking the face off Magnus. I can go for that any day. Joey Ryan doing anything and seeing Al Snow uh, wrestle yeah. again. Uh, it, I, to see Al Snow wrestle again, that's cool. Yeah. Joey Ryan's uh, awesome. Um, this thing just went too far. Uh, three-way tag team title match. How can you go wrong with that lineup between Angle, it, Styles, it, Kaz, and Daniels? As long as nobody has, listen, like, any baby pa- papers, I'm cool with the match, okay? Listen to me. Listen to me. If TNA, if for some fucking reason you decide not to push Team Appletini to the fucking moon, I swear to God Appletini. I will riot. Oh, he wa- okay, okay. This is the part I do like about him back. Because he just walks into the room that he obviously was not in before and just pulls an Appletini out of a locker out of nowhere. <laughs> See, Chris, this is the best stuff Christopher Daniels has been doing ever. This is Christopher Daniels. I I, I don't know how many people have actually like met him in person or followed his like Twitter, seen some like out of character like interviews. I this is fucking guy. Christopher Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> this is he's just, like super geek and it's it's tremendous. And I'm glad that that kind of side of he's always wearing like the best Marvel T-shirts. Like throwback <laughs> Marvel T-shirts. I I watch for the see what throwback crazy Marvel T-shirt he wears this week. What's up, Chuck? I, I, that's because Christopher Daniels is the type of guy that if he wasn't Christopher Daniels, he would have absolutely no problem sitting down on the couch and doing the show with us. Each <laughs> week. It really seems like it. It really yeah. seems like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But seriously, are you gonna? There, so go ahead, Wills. Oh, what I was going to say was because Chachi made it perfect. He, he's right. Why? Because when Christopher Daniels is, was in IWC, mm-hmm. when it all went out afterwards, Christopher Daniels came over not knowing any of us. I don't know if Sorg was there on the one side of the that restaurant, whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. We were awfully segregated back then. Yeah. And <laughs> Daniels walks over and goes... Hey, feel bad. Your lights are on on your car. Feel bad gets up, goes, checks out the car. Daniels looks at all of us and goes, I don't know what the fuck he drives. <laughs> wow. Right. I, I, I mean, so honestly, Christopher Daniels is a dick. Okay. I, I would <laughs> no, replace. <it's> awesome. <laughs> listen, if, if you know me, I would replace Lunchbox with Christopher Daniels. Whoa. With his heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but honestly, like if you're looking at that three way, it's, it's hard I, for me to be upset about that. <laughs> I know, right? And if, if you said if the same thing, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, oh, you're just somebody that I used to know. <laughs> but but if, if <laughs> you're that a fucking uh, song? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, why, lost, that's seriously. why I took the line and ran with it. Sorry, go ahead, WrestleFan. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you're looking at that three way tag match, you, who, you, who do you have? You have Christopher Daniels and Kazarian, who are an actual fucking tag team with a gimmick. Yeah. Um, that they're Team Appletini. <laughs> it's still, against, this is gimmick. Against, I don't know, man. Against Team, you're amazing, but we don't have shit for you. Um, AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. And the other team that's gimmick is that they're Mexican. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Hey, that's good enough. That's Wrestle good enough. Fan. That's good enough, man. You know? Wrestle fan. Yes. Chat room. Chat room. Hey, what'd you guys learn from wrestling this week? Oh, was that to me? Fan. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, you said chat room. Well, I said wrestle fan and chat room. I it was a little them- bit of a muddled toss. I'm sorry. I want them to get. I want them to get theirs in while we're answering. That way, we can go to them. Uh, okay. I learned from wrestling this week that you know what? I, I said bad things about them. I think last week. Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually growing fond of the two, the two uh, little flippy dudes. I, I kind of, I, I kind of like them. Let's go, team flippy dudes. Hey, uh, honestly, I don't know what you guys were bitching about, 
I, I love the uh, half mask idea. I dig it. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was great. I, I think they should. Uh, I and don't hate me, but I think they should do half pants as well. Hmm. Like I, I think they should go with like the half full on. But, no, but then, I mean, but then, does Ray have to go half shirt? Well, no, right? I mean, shirt doesn't matter. I, I wish he would get rid of that fucking Riddler's question mark. Because I have no idea why the fuck he instantly do, started wearing Do I have Mysterio. abs? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> we had a discussion about his shirt on Twitter a couple weeks ago, I think. It's or, dumb. Yeah, we'll do, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I dig that. Sorry, go ahead. Were you done, Russell fan? No, I'm done. Okay. Okay. Wheels. What did I learn? I learned... If you're gonna hit CM Punk, keep your mouth shut. Uh, mm. Mad Mike sent an email that learned that uh, I learned that Cena doesn't get much time off, but when he does, he actually watches the rest of the show and stares at man nipples. What was the nipples thing? I missed that. He was. And he said that Anto- the thing he knows about Antonio Cesaro was that he had giant nipples. Oh, yeah. was that the thing? That's the thing that Gabe uh, Book of Gabe at Book of Gabe was going crazy about. He said which, uh, he doesn't which, have. Yeah. Which, yeah, Gabe is kind of out of hand in that, because, yeah, just, like, I know, have fun with it. But I love that Cena doesn't notice the fact that the week before, he lifted a 400-pound man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, he noticed that apparently he has giant nipples. Seriously, (laughs) either way, Gabe's still got to chill out, man. I I tweeted last time, like, dude, chill out. Well, my whole thing is he, he came back and he had a sense of humor. Yeah. That's fine. That's I mean, fine. he said he didn't have areolas. He had areola eyes. Get it? Eyes? <laughs> uh, LB, what'd you learn, oh, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. I learned that uh, John Cena has terrible taste in tribal tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that shit was going on on, his, uh, uh, on his arm there, but I mean, he, I hope he didn't pay somebody to do that. Uh, I mean, I'll Jesus. explain. Uh, it's... No, it it it's a new uh, medical brace. Okay. Uh, it's not uh, the bulky ones that they used to make people wear all the time. Okay. And since obviously he's John Cena and he gets the best medical care possible, mm-hmm. then he can afford that shit. But it, it's basically a stick-on brace, and Riz could uh, verify that. I'm sure. You should write an article on that. No. No? I don't want to. No. Um, no, 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 no. I mean Riz. Riz. Riz, yeah, Riz is yeah, the Riz. Man, so on that, but, uh, so. it, yeah, because when I first saw him, I, I was like, so he comes back and he has a sense of humor and got a tattoo. Hmm? Uh, that was always his sense of humor. I didn't, I didn't actually think it was a tattoo. I'm messing with you. Like, I was just <laughs> kidding. You don't have to explain what it actually is. I was explaining it for the rest <laughs> of the people. Because I'm sure there are people out there who think that John Cena went out and got a fucking terrible tattoo and we didn't want the people to think that you're in that line lb in case they didn't get the I joke see, yes. I we're see. just pouring it all together from the chat room it was swollen like big show's fist riz uh says i learned that hogan thinks he is supposed to be the lead in the wrestler and highlander movies and nobody except howard stern believes it hmm. what why are we talking about hulk hogan I get what's my Apparently, Riz listens to Howard Stern. Uh, Bobby <laughs> J Town learned that CM Punk is the real, and that Dario Tez is the no good son of a bitch. Also, Sorg made me sad on his Greenberg comment, and Hulk Hogan feels like a sex roller coaster. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not talking about that. I, Move not, on. Move the fuck that. on. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I. Uh, that's it. I learned so. that Hogan's sex tape for me will be like two girls, one cup. Don't watch Ch- it. I have, Chachi, don't watch I have it. never seen get, it. Ooh, we should do reaction Ch- No, videos. Chachi, what did I say? We're not talking about it. I have never <laughs> seen it, and I will never see it. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It, no, no, it doesn't. It never happened. Wait till you see never the, the, the Hulk Hogan sex tape reaction videos. Is there um, such a thing? There will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Send your Hulk Hogan sex tape reaction videos to good times at wrestling mayhem show.com. Good times. I just reaction videos, not the actual video. Uh, I, Please. I don't approve. 
Let's Gun keep bro. let's keep uh, Chachi's virgin eyes away from this one. Hey, no, I you know virgin what? Virgin eyes. People people used to uh, I when I worked at a dial up company, they were real dicks <laughs> when it came to shit like that on the internet. So they would always be like, "Oh, you gotta see this clip of this guy getting hit in the nuts," and I click it and see the title and close the window. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I was so used to that reaction time that the video would never load. It would just be a black screen on YouTube, window closed. <laughs> and plus you were at a dial-up company, so you had a lot of time for that thing to load. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I learned from this week. Um... <laughs> Dick. <laughs> what, right? Um, um, and then I learned, uh, I am really happy with the actual wrestling happening on Raw. Oh, yeah. Like, amazingly so. Um, uh, Riz followed up. Uh, Hogan claims he turned down the role that Mickey Rourke took in The Wrestler. Uh, mm-hmm. He regrets it to this day, not taking the part and refused the script three times. He also turned down Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and Highlander. All three of those movies would have sucked. I agree completely. You, um, know, you know what I regret? That Hulk Hogan is the thing that we talk about. At this point, yeah. yeah. Riz, Riz. I, Wait, hold on. What We talk about TNA... And all of this other shitty wrestling every TNA week. And, TNA is in dirty old man pornography. We talk about it every week. On that note, let's leave you with the dirty old man pornography thought left in your head. Guys, this has been the Wrestling Mayhem Show. WrestlingMayhemShow.com <laughs> Bless me now. We're, we're on iTunes. Go, go uh, please TV, comment on there. Roku. I'll put you that. And, Stitcher. And the other, it was Stitcher. Uh, please vote for us at the Stitcher Awards. Link over at sorgatronmedia.com. We're Ooh. right here, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, every Tuesday night, around about 8 30, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Also, drop us a line, any comments or suggestions, anything going on at Get to Good Times, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412 206 WMS0 as Bo Diggity was so eloquent with earlier. Uh, and also, buy the app. WMS Gold and your iOS App Store or Amazon App Store for uh, for uh, Android devices. Uh, download the Stitcher app. I got links over there uh, in the chat room. I'm going to have them around a few other places. If you're on a BlackBerry phone, if you're on a WebOS phone, it even works on there if you go get the Stitcher app. So go check that out as well. You can find the Wrestling Mayhem show on there. Um, and with that, uh, guys, it's been a fun show. I think a lot of I think I've vented a little too much. Other than that, thanks Wheels for joining us. Go check out rwalive.com to see what's going on there and what he's involved in. Uh, the Russell fans got some great stuff. <laughs> Just got another email from Big PPC. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's got a great column of what he watched this week in wrestling, sir. Uh, quick preview, R- real quick. What, what did you uh, watch? Yeah, if you want to know about what a I said, quick preview. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I thought you wanted me to preview. Yes, we want you to preview it. Oh, quickly. no! I want you to say, "Give me names." What did you watch so they can see? Find out what apartment complex wrestling is and what makes good commentary. Like, That's a good teaser. DJ <laughs> 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 Lunchbox <laughs> is at thoughtfulriot.com. It's good shit. Three Constantly. days a week updates new stuff. Excellent. Go check it out. Thoughtfulriot.com. Chachi's, Chachi's at insertcointobegin.com for all your video game needs as well as Let's Play. All and, the time. And Unsung. Yes. Where we get to go play by the train. Over at pittsburghonvideo.org. I think it's yeah, both of them. I, let's just point out for this crowd that if you're looking for serious nonprofit news, it's not the show for you. <laughs> but go <laughs> ahead and check it out. Let's see if it is. <laughs> and of course, I'm at sorgatron.com for my bloggy blog and everything else at mikesorg.com to link all the crazy shit I'm into. Uh, please check out sorgatronmedia.com for all the, other, all the other news, DVD releases for your wrestling needs, and social media tips. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot, everybody. Great chat room tonight. Lots of videos. What is that? A mean sheep? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Thank you. The Wrestling Revolution. Go, go look up the Wrestling Revolution. I can't remember the dot com thing, but I usually tweet it. Uh, they always post their show, and they have a great chat room over there. Big PPZ, Riz in the chat room. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town, Matt Carlin's before. Everybody else to stop by. Alex Cars. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Mayhem. Out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.